was a teenage serial killer is a no-budget 1993 short film by Sarah Jacobson. No-budget essentially means it was made for as little as possible, coming in at around $1,600. Now I will spoil my review a little bit here and mention that it is a pretty good first film project. I actually found it entertaining enough that I'll encourage you to watch it before you watch this review. Before we get into the summary, I must say that my usual method of getting the b-roll didn't pan out, so I'm sorry for the bad quality of the footage. It was also taken from film, so the quality wasn't too high to begin with anyways. Personally, it doesn't bother me, but I know some people are persnickety. We open on a dead body, which is always a great start, as well as our teenage serial killer Mary doing cool looking things. Okay, that sounded critical, but I actually like this intro. The music and the still images, as well as the short video clips, creates a vibe that I'm into. This particular type of cinematic irony is one of my favorite things. It just creates an artistically gruesome scene. Take for example the use of California Dreamin' by the Mamas and the Papas from Rob Zombie's 31 flick. The old song is very eerie when combined with the desperate context of the scenes it's played in. The first actual scene, which starts the story, is Mary visiting a friend, brother, I'm not sure. All I know is he looks like a modern day country singer and it's kind of off-putting. But here we get another good effect that I liked. As he lectures her, the audio distorts and the white balance is off. Some of the audio loops over and over. It's pretty bare bones, so at first I thought this was just from the film being old and damaged, which I did find this to watch on YouTube thanks to the American Underground Film Archive, but I think it was done on purpose to create a visual and auditory sensation of the main girl's internal anger. Either that or the damage to the film was taken advantage of- Either that or the damage to the film was taken advantage of- Either that or the damage to the film was taken advantage of either that or the damage to the film was taken advantage of pretty well. He dies, so either way she clearly wasn't a fan. The next victim in Mary's streak is a one time fling. I can't go into too much detail here nor play much B roll of this because I fear TOS unlike the original uploaders, but it ends with him laying dead with a banana in his mouth. Fun game, comment below what you think the sequence of events was if you haven't watched it. Next we see her watching a young couple. The guy graffitis a heart and she crosses it out, very subtle stuff. When the girl leaves the guy, he immediately catcalls Mary because he is a gentleman and like any self-respecting woman, she pushes him into the street. No notes here except for cool. And as anyone would do, when she finds a guy committing murder, Mary joins in. Naturally, this leads to them bonding and he tells her the tale of how his uncle used to dress him up like a girl when he was young and now he murders straight men. You know, that old chestnut. We get a fun, romantic montage of them committing crimes and developing a beautiful relationship based on mutual secrecy, which we all know is built to last. I mean, just take a look at Necromantic. Weren't they goals? Everything falls apart when he kills a guy without her, which really, man, that's like watching Game of Thrones without her. I've been murdered. Oh, I knew it couldn't last. And what follows is perhaps the most genius comedy ever. You know, this is really bad. It's really hard to find someone you have so much in common with. I really loved him. But don't worry, I'm not gonna hurt you. Go ahead, you can go. Afterwards, Mary gets harassed by a strung out guy while she's mourning her beautiful relationship on the stoop. His version of harassment, unlike the other men we've seen so far, is aggressive emotional support. Honestly, I kind of want this washed up Ringo star in my life. She goes into how she's killed 19 men, a very comforting thing to hear from a stranger, and how her dad abused her as a kid. He turns out to be like all the others, aka a sexist, but she decides she doesn't want to kill him. She has a change of heart and says that maybe murder is bad. Roll credits. Now there are obviously some problems here besides the fact that this grown doll is supposed to look 19, but there's also things that do work. Let's start with the shortcomings first so we can end on a positive note because overall I did like this. Coming in at under 25 minutes long and the actual story playing out in even less time, the pacing suffers a bit. While it was perfect for ADHD brain, it admittedly leads to a lot of telling and not much showing. If this were stretched out to feature length and therefore allowed the depth of a feature film, I think it would benefit. The acting is alright, although the delivery of lines is stiff and it seems like the side actors gave it a lot more passion than Mary's actress did. But she's also meant to be a serial killer, so that could be overacting instead of underacting. I don't know. 
Now for the double-edged sword, the themes and how they were portrayed. They are pretty in your face, which personally I do have mixed feelings about in media, but at the same time this film is very short and there were not really any better ways to use the time than how it was used. I have not seen Jacobson's other work, so I can't really say if this is a shortcoming of the writer or if it's a byproduct of the small runtime. Either way, the themes get across in the end, so I guess it works whether it's graceful or not. The main theme in question is, of course, sexism with the common movie trope of a woman-hating serial killer subverted into a man-hating serial killer. Usually these misogynistic killers target women who frustrate them, whether that is the individual women or that quote-unquote type of woman in general. Here are killers targeting men who frustrate her, sexists. I also like that we see different types and degrees of sexism, showing that the writer had an understanding of misogyny that went deeper than surface level. She was a woman, so obviously she knew something about it, but it takes more than just being a victim of something to understand it. And I don't think it's fair to discredit the intellect behind this by saying, oh well, every lady knows about woman haters. The entire film, although quite simple, does seem to communicate a deeper level of understanding of the subject overall. It also has a good sense of humor. A lot of it was funny, if only because it was kind of... What was that noise? A lot of it was funny, if only because it was kind of cathartic. I would love to push cat collars into the street, are you kidding me? But really, it was funny in just the right places and in regards to the right things. The fact that the main girl is a murderer is not really treated as a serious thing and is used instead as a device to get the message of the film across. And that message is pretty clearly stated at the end, so I won't even go into paraphrasing. My fault! It's not my fault! I didn't do it! I don't have to be ashamed! No one wants to listen to my story, and then I get this anger that I'm not allowed to express because it's not right for a woman to have any rage. You can have your fucking James Dean image and be a hero to society, and I have just as much pain, if not more, and no one can even look me in the eye and say I'm sorry! My story exists whether anyone's gonna listen to me or not. Whether you want to ignore me or invalidate my stories, I'm going to tell them anyways. You can't keep me quiet. Overall, I did enjoy this short film. It was entertaining despite its shortcomings, which ended up just enhancing the humorous parts of my opinion. Unfortunately, we can't all agree on this for some reason, but I think most of us can agree that sexism is pretty bad. Also unfortunate is Sarah Jacobson's passing some years ago, because based on this first entry to her discography alone, I think she could have done some pretty cool stuff given the things we have now. Luckily, I'm sure there's some directors out there who are just as talented as her and tackling the same issues that she did. If you think sexism is bad, like this video. And if you, uh, if you love pushing men into the street, leave a comment. It's all for the engagement. If you want to support this channel monetarily, I have an Etsy and a Depop store. Both are great ways to do it. Speaking of which, I will be a vendor on the square in Somerset, Ohio at this year's Small Town Christmas on the 3rd of December. If you don't know where that is, you probably live too far away to worry about it anyways, but if you do know, then come say hi and give me money. Lots of it, preferably. Thanks so much for watching. Adios!